Oh shit! Oh shit! What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now that clip you just saw was actually from a live reaction that I filmed watching bright and early in the morning with the debut of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Digital Next video. And unfortunately it got copyright claimed by YouTube, so wasn't able to put that one out for you guys. So this is gonna be more of a recap of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Digital Next, but also with a primary emphasis on what I'm most excited about. And I think what you're most excited about as well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Now, if you guys missed the presentation, you can go watch it yourselves, but I'll do a quick recap here. They discussed how Rush Jewels, I believe, are going to be localized over for the TCG in the digital sense on Nintendo Switch, I believe. They also talked about Duel Links and how Arc V is going to be on Duel Links, and that really doesn't surprise anyone because that was next in line. But then they also discussed a brand new IP, which is called Cross Duel. And to be honest, this just reminds me of the Yu-Gi-Oh! episode where Yugi, Kaiba, Joey, and Merrick are dueling to the top of the Battle City Tower. But nonetheless, we are going to talk about the most climactic and exciting part of the presentation. Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. This was without a doubt the highlight of the show. For those of you who don't know, Master Duel was teased all the way back in 2020 for a brief moment in time, I believe in one of the OCG live streams, they mentioned it once and then never mentioned it again. No one has heard of Master Duel ever since. And so there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not Digital Next was going to discuss anything in regards to Master Duel. And the fact that Konami was promoting it on almost every single platform on social media, on Duel Links, even the OCG and TCG people were both able to watch this. This is where the speculation started to come in that maybe there is something here for Master Duel because it's going to be something for everyone. And when you guys see this game, this is exactly what Yu-Gi-Oh! has been needing for the past several years. You see this and it looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh! equivalent of MTG Arena or Hearthstone or Legends of Runeterra. Could you imagine if we had this during the 2020 pandemic, how much better this would have been for Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole so we weren't having to subject ourselves to remote duels? Obviously, we made the best of it, but it would have been so much better if we had a a dedicated first party platform years prior that we could have been enjoying all this time. And it looks like Konami has finally decided to deliver on that expectation. Senior producer and soon to be one of my best friends because I'm going to be following him religiously, Kenichi Kataoka was actually walking us through some of the key features of the game, at least what they wanted to disclose at this particular moment. And again, this is something that we've been needing for Yu-Gi-Oh for so long. So the fact that they actually revealed as much as they did at this point, I was expecting this to be like another teaser similar similar to what the cross duel teaser was, because they didn't talk about that at all. And so it was nice to actually have one of the senior producers of the game walk us through the different aspects. The first thing Kataoka discussed, and I think this is one of the most imperative features and something that I've personally discussed when I talked about what Master Duel needs in order for it to be successful, is the fact that it's going to be cross platform. Whether you're playing PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, Steam, iOS, Android, you are going to be able to play this game on all of those platforms. Now, I don't think Kataoka 100% confirmed that you're going to be able to play with someone on PlayStation if you're on iOS or, you know, any other combination of the platforms. But the fact that it's going to be available on almost every single modern platform leads me to believe that this is going to be the case. I think this is something that is absolutely mandatory. We know that it's capable of being done because so many games in the digital space now are cross-platform. That's one of the hallmarks of modern gaming. And so imagine if you're able to play with anyone regardless of system, I think that is fantastic. Kataoka also mentioned that this will be the first ever Yu-Gi-Oh! game to support 4K resolution, which to be fair, this is a card game, so is that the most important thing? We're not trying to get photorealistic graphics or anything, but it's nice that the game looks really pretty, and it's nice that they also push the game to its limits, especially with the modern capabilities of modern platform technology. Kataoka also went on to discuss one of the most inherent flaws about trading card games, especially from an audience's perspective, and that's the ease of followability, because it can actually be rather difficult to understand what's happening in a card game, especially if you're unfamiliar with what is going on. And so based off of some of the clips that we were shown, it looks like there was actually a very acute attention to detail here in ensuring that some animations were put in place so that way an audience could actually follow what's happening and that way it kind of lowers the barrier to entry for newer players especially, but this is something to ease the accessibility for a larger audience and something that Yu-Gi-Oh! in particular has definitely 
desperately needed because Yu-Gi-Oh, in my opinion, is one of, if not the hardest card game to learn out of all the TCGs, just because it's so complex, it's so granular, there's so many different rule sets layered on top of one another, and so by having these systems in place, it makes it much more easy for people to follow, which means it's a lot more likely for people to get sucked in and get excited about the game. He then went on to discuss that there's going to be an actual tutorial system in place in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, and you may think this may be one of the most basic inclusions for a game imaginable, but there's been a definitive lack on Konami's end of an actual adequate tutorial to teach new players how to get into the game. There definitely seems to be a heavy focus and emphasis on helping get new players into the game, get them acclimated, because again, the barrier to entry is so difficult, not just from a price perspective for some people, but also the learning curve is just so incredibly steep. And so having these tools in place, you know, as a content creator, we're always looking for ways to get more people into the game. And we get dozens, if not hundreds of messages constantly asking about, oh, how does this work? How does that work? And so if there's a dedicated master tutorial system that could ultimately answer all of these questions, like one giant interactive FAQ that's going to be a part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, that's fantastic. Katoka also mentioned specifically how Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and Legacy of the Duelist are both games that are catered towards Yu-Gi-Oh! fans who want to have that sort of anime manga experience by immersing themselves in those worlds. And there's nothing wrong with that inherently, but Master Duel specifically is tailored towards the people who want the full-on TCG OCG experience, and that is what gets me the most excited about this. They're not having to go and cater to the anime and the manga fans specifically here because they have their own dedicated games that they can play. It seems that they are really trying hard to pinpoint what the actual TCG and OCG players want out of an experience, and that is who Master Duel is for. Kataoka then wrapped up the Master Duel section by saying how there's going to be tournament support both for competitive and casual players, and that ideally they want Master Duel to be a part of the World Championship 2022, which means there's going to be a path for players to be able to play and actually earn their way to the World Championship, similar to how you can by playing the TCG as well as playing at Duel Links. And I think that's fantastic because again, it opens up the accessibility for more people to be able to play the game. Not everyone has the means to be able to travel all around the country competing in YCSs, grinding regionals for points to be able to place at the top and be able to actually earn their way to the national championship and then ultimately the world championship as well. People are going to be able to experience Yu-Gi-Oh from the comfort of their own home, be able to grind it out as much as humanly possible. And I think that is just a win-win all around because it's going to be giving people as much access to the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game the way it's meant to be played as possible. And that's been one of my biggest gripes leading into this is that Duel Links has been around since 2016 and we haven't had a dedicated first party platform to the actual Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game in the first place. The game that got us here in the first place. The game that is responsible for Duel Links' creation. But now we're finally going to see that come to fruition. So while the Digital Next did discuss a lot of aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel, there's also a lot of things they didn't discuss. And probably the most important thing that is circulating around the community right now is how is this game going to be monetized? And this, in my opinion, is one of the things that will either make or break this game for the long term. Because a lot of people are really hoping that this does not turn into another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links because that's just basically a glorified gotcha game. And there's a lot of issues with that platform altogether. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you've heard me complain about this time and time again. However, I think there are a lot of interesting monetization models that Konami could implement here that are actually radically different than what we've come to expect. Take a look at other games like Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering, and I guess even Duel Links, right? Most of these games revolve around using some sort of fake currency to buy digital packs, to open cards, and build your decks. And while that theoretically could work for this game as well, I feel like it's a little bit different, right? Because in the instance of Hearthstone and I guess Duel Links, they kind of started from the ground up and were slowly adding cards as the game progressed. And in the instance of Magic the Gathering Arena, they were able to start by focusing on Standard, which since Magic focuses on a set rotation, they only have to implement so many cards at the beginning, and then they started adding more cards and formats later on, but you still had to get them through these certain mechanisms. I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel may have to take a bit of a different approach here, because Yu-Gi-Oh! has over 10,000 cards, and it's an eternal format. Every card that's ever been printed, aside from the ones that are on the ban list, are legal for competitive play. And so how are they going to implement that if they only do a few cards at a time? Going based off of the videos here, there were Shadals, there was Tri Brigade, there was Eldritch, so there was a lot of cards that were integrated into the system already, there's a few things that come to mind. First of which, and this is something 
something that a lot of people are hoping for, but I don't exactly know if it's the route they're going to take. They could make the game free to play and then allow you to have a bunch of microtransactions to customize your experience. Different card backs, different playing fields, different little avatars. We saw that they have the little fun trinkets you can play with like most of these other games have. There are ways that they could make it that players would actually just cash in to be able to have their field or their cards look a certain way while still making it a free to play experience. And while these other games do have a free to play experience, I don't know if they're exactly that generous. I think that would be the most idealistic way to go about it, which means it's probably the least likely. They could go all the way back and implement booster packs back to LOB all the way up to what are we at now? King's Court. The next core set is Dawn of Majesty. And that would be hundreds of sets they would have to introduce into the game. And it's not impossible for them to do that, but I'm not exactly sure how keen the community is going to be to have to pay for packs essentially twice when they already may have these cards in real life. Another interesting monetization model is the prospect of a subscription-based trading card game system, right? Like what if you take World of Warcraft or any of these MMORPGs and make it that you're paying to access the entire card pool or the ability to compete in these tournaments and put it behind a paywall of like $10 a month? I think that's very fair because then they're going to be constantly getting income from this game, but you're not having to shell out like $800, $1,000 a month just to be able to open all these packs, hope you get the cards that you need. I just don't think that's the right way to go about it. Another very interesting approach here is what if they made specific structure decks, let's call them, that were specific to Master Duel itself that contained all of the cards of a given archetype. You could sell a Shadal structure deck or a Salomon Great structure deck for $10. And yes, I know there's a Shadal and Salomon Great structure deck for the TCG, but imagine they did this for Tri Brigade and for Eldritch and all the other archetypes as well. So you could pay $10, $20, $30, get your core of those specific cards. And that way you have a playable deck that you're able to then play with. And then if you want to build more decks, you can buy some of these other pre-constructed decks. The more I think about it, the more unique, interesting, creative ways Konami has to be able to monetize this game in a way that's never been done before. And I really don't want them to go down the path of like Arena or Hearthstone where you're just cracking packs until you get the cards that you want. It just seems outdated and Yu-Gi-Oh's card pool seems far too vast to be able to do that efficiently. And I'm not sure if the player base is really going to tolerate that. A game like Legends of Runeterra doesn't even have booster packs. And so it's clear that there are ways to innovate in this space. And so it really depends on whether or not Konami wants to go ahead and pioneer this space for the better. Well, let's be honest. I don't think that's going to happen. Konami's probably going to follow the traditional model because that's probably going to give them the biggest return on their investment here. And people are still going to play it anyway, just like they do with Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. I'm just being overly optimistic here in hoping that they're actually going to change and be able to make something that's actually just going to blow our minds. Just from what I saw in this short little video, I'm really excited and I'm actually highly invested in the development of this and where it's going to go when it's actually going to get released. And every time there's going to be some news trickling out for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, you can bet your ass that I am going to be making content about it. So be sure to subscribe already if you haven't, because you're going to be getting a ton of Master Duel news. I just want this to be the game that I've always dreamed of for the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. This is 100% the future and the direction that we need to go. And both this and the Yu-Gi-Oh! physical trading card game can coexist side by side because most players are going to play both. People want to be able to play in person, but if you're not able to play in person, you can play online with your friends or just random strangers, grind out the ladder, compete in online tournaments, and just have that Yu-Gi-Oh! experience from the comfort of your own home. We can have both. This is something that can be easily done, and I'm so happy Konami's finally starting to take the initiative by bringing this to fruition, but I really hope, I really, really hope that they just do it right, and so we'll just have to see. But guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and what you would want to see as a part of this new game, because if they haven't already finished developing it, we can maybe possibly have our voices heard by contributing what would make the most sense from the player perspective. All that input could go directly to them, and so let's use the comment section as the ability to voice our opinions for what we would want to see out of this incredible game. Be sure to let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and we will see you next time.